Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you already know, this is your U.S. General 5 Draw 2 cart with side tray and deep compartment. And as I always state, as usual, I always keep my signature lingering somewhere in the background, my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Okay? All right, today is Monday, as you can see. Just made it over to the storage. Uh, I was doing a lot of running around this morning. Tried to run down to the post office, you know, to see what was going on um, with a few packages. Unfortunately, um, one of the packages that I was supposed to receive back on Thursday, um, technically it still haven't made its way to me. Um, it's traveling through a particular state where, you know, the USPS is moving kind of slow due to, you know, the worldly current events that's going on at this prior moment. Okay, um, while I was at the post office, I did receive uh, another item that was delivered to me Saturday, but unfortunately, um, the postal service, they did not want to leave it at the mailbox. Um, they claimed that they didn't have no secure place to keep it, I guess, you know, because the seller sent the item um, in a box where that technically it really didn't um, need the big packaging because the item really wasn't that big but you know sometimes when you're purchasing things from online you know the sellers they don't know they just really want to get the item out to you but you know a lot of times with all the extra packaging and so on and so forth it's you know it's really not that necessary it's really not um that serious or anything like that but i did receive one of the items okay um i have been in contact with the seller um from the item that i'm still waiting on okay have been communicating um, with them and basically they see what I see on my end. They did contact the postal service. So, you know, they came up with the same um, result that I did. I did inform the seller, you know, I am a patient person, you know, I'm not in a rush. I'll give it a few days, you know, to see where things is basically at, see if it turns up. It's not like the package is missing or anything like that because uh, technically that's not the case. It's just hasn't been delivered um, to the next following destination in order for it to be processed. So, you know, I'm going to give that some time. Um, I did speak to another seller from an item um, that I pulled the trigger on that I purchased. Okay, will be um, sending me the tracking information for that tomorrow and getting um, that particular package out for me. Okay, because I do have a good tool review and a good uh, comparison coming towards the end of the week once I do receive that item amongst um, two other particular sets that I probably put in some videos in the past, okay? Um, when I do receive this item on hand, like I did state uh, in the last video, um, there aren't any comparisons amongst these two brands and these two um, different particular type items on YouTube. Well, at least I haven't seen any, okay? So, you know, in my character assumption, it'll be for the first time um, with the two side by side in order to be able to give a comparison and document it um, on actual video footage and upload it to YouTube for the very first time. So, you know, I'll be looking forward to putting that together and giving that to the viewers, okay? So right now what I'm going to do is we're going to get into the item that I did receive today and basically I'm going to jump into quite a few other things. So, you know, if you have the time to watch, you know, follow me. Let's get to it. All right. So walk with me. Okay. Since I received the item, I already basically unpackaged the item. So as you can see here, get it out for you real quick. Okay. Um, what you're taking a look at. First, I'll give you the part number if it'll focus in. I'm trying to get it to focus in properly for you. Yeah, matter of fact, let me lay it down on the table so that you can see. The part number is SGCP uh, 1B. Okay, it's SGCP 1B. Okay. Um, the CP, this is a cotta pin puller, okay, with, you know, a thick shaft, 
to it. Okay, so this was um, one of the items that I was waiting for um, that I just received. Okay, as you can see, it is in excellent condition. Unfortunately, um, it didn't come in a red handle, which I'm not really uh, concerned with, even though I have a lot of um, red and black red handles. It's not to say that I don't have um, some orange and black handles also, because I actually do. Okay, so you know, that's just first up as far as what I receive. Um, I will do a comparison amongst um, some others that I actually do have um, besides this particular model. Um, as you already know, when Sears had the 90% liquidation uh, sale, I wound up picking up quite a few things and I just happened to come across uh, a battery tool service set that actually came with some picks and things of that nature in it. So I'll get that out uh, so that we could take a look at that testically compared um, to the Snap-on and I'll get out of Milwaukee just to give a little comparison as far as the quality, the thickness of the shaft and things of that nature. Okay. Okay, as you can see now, what I got at the top of the tool cart, it's basically still in its packaging okay which is an auto special tool set um when i basically um picked up some of these items you know coming from off the 90 percent liquidation sale you know technically there really wasn't bought so many items that you know i really needed but because things was basically so cheap and getting them at you know at a real low cost i figured you know here let me pick up a, uh, quite a few things some of these items will be going out to some of the lucky subscribers you know once the channel reach um a certain amount of subscribers because i do have a previous video out demonstrating some of the items you know that i'll be giving to some of the subscribers once the um channel reach a certain amount of subscribers okay okay basically you know here just to give a little description as far as what came in the accessory set um coming from the sears 90 percent liquidation so Okay, as you can see, you know, they have their craftsman's picks and what came along is a eight millimeter uh, side terminal battery um, ratchet and wrench. Also, um, what came in the package is a magnetic um, telescope and pickup tool. And then also they provided in the package, as you can see, this is KD tools. Okay, um, this is an air pressure meter right here and then they gave also um a terminal cleaner that came in the package okay um as you can see here <clears throat> this is a milwaukee pick okay almost something in the same design as what you would see the cotter pin snap on but you can see the difference you know between the shafts you know the milwaukee's are very thin as you can see here um with the snap on you can tell that the shaft is uh, basically extremely thick and more durable and quality comparison um the same thing just alone you know even when you take a look at the craftsman the craftsman's is not basically as thick as the snap on okay um these handles um on a craftsman's Technically, they're not too bad. They don't, you know, feel too bad in hand or anything like that. So, you know, when it comes to picks, I, I would say that, you know, they possibly will hold up. But um, throughout time, depending upon how hard you are on your tools, I'm more enough assuming that more enough uh, the handles would, you know, tear up a little bit. But as you can see, um, the Snap-on is of higher quality. Once again, the part number is SGCP1B right here. Okay. So like I said, you know, when I would be in the shop, a lot of times, you know, I always use my Milwaukee's. I, you know, I'm big on Milwaukee. But as you can see, the difference, you know, in due time um, with enough leverage and enough force, you know, pulling something will happen to bend and pry um this shaft will tend to bend on you um testically compared to you know the shaft that is basically on a snap on because technically this is very very thick not quite sure of the alloys that um it's made of but it is very durable it's not like your normal um standard 
short and long mini picks because the short and long mini picks are testically much more thinner in comparison not as much as the milwaukee's but in between you know the dimension and size of the milwaukee and the craftsman okay so you know just to give a little quick comparison amongst those things right there like i said um you know i don't really have no need for these items because i do technically have these items in my selection of equipment like i said these were just some random things when i came across the sale i just happened to pick up so you know for the subscribers out there you know hit that like you know share the video you know comment on a video once the video makes a certain amount of subscribers you know things like that of that nature and quite a few other things that i have along on my equipment you know i'm going to be sending out to some individuals okay you know i see who was who you know who comments on the videos and who follows the channel you know faithfully so things of that nature you know i do what i say okay so we're going to get into a um, few other things i'm going to get some items out and we're going to talk about quite a few things right now okay well we're basically on the topic of me uh just receiving the cotter pin puller you know for the younger technicians that are out there you know you can get by but you know when coming into the game depending upon what type of work uh that you basically do you do want to get yourself a good set of brake tools okay so just as well as i already demonstrated and showed the cotter pin puller back here Okay, what you're taking a look at right here is a magnetic brake retaining spring tool right here. Okay, this is a snap-on. Um, it's not always necessary, you know, um, that you actually have to have the magnetic type, okay? But, you know, it does help in applications, help you come a little bit more efficient in certain ways in certain areas, okay? Um, but what you really want to have is a quarter-inch flip socket okay as you can see here this is a, a snap-on as you can see also here okay if i can get you the part number which is s5115 pardon me s6118 made in the usa okay if you didn't catch that part of me because you know i'm holding it up to the camera so at times it's not focusing in properly on my end but the part number is S6118, okay? And as you can see here, this is what is called a brake spoon, okay? This is a snap-on also. As you see, the part number is B1461, made in the USA, okay? And what you have over here is a brake bleeding wrench, Okay, this is also a snap-on. This is ranging from 8 millimeter to 10 millimeter. Okay, um, if I can get you the part number, so focus in is S6110A. Okay, as you can see, it's made in the USA. All right. Um, also, as you can see here, this is a brake caliper press right here. This is snap-on. And the part number is BTCP600. Um, this is um, the most newest model of their brake caliber press tool right here. They do actually have other versions, not just in Snap-on, um, but they also distribute, you know, in Bluepoint. Okay. Um, real quick, just to get out of another quick item that, you know, should be in your toolbox or your tool chest real quick. Just give me a second okay is a set like this as you can see and these are brake caliber hangers okay this is a set distributed by Lyles okay and the part number is 48020 um when you purchase these they only come in a set of two okay sometimes it's good to have an extra set um i forgot exactly you know how much this set runs i don't believe you know they're really that expensive actually um before walking in store purchasing i think that you can actually pick up these for a little less cheaper um online okay but if you're unfamiliar with the brand the brand is Lyles. okay it, it is a family-owned um business and company and distributor um they do have full lifetime warranty Lyles is an extra uh um excellent brand 
um, especially when it comes to warranty. They actually rebrand a lot of different um, tools for a lot of different tool truck brands. Okay, so, you know, do your research on a lot of particular items and equipment um, that you're interested in for your applications because there is a lot of rebranding going on out there in the tool, tool world. Okay, so don't think just because um, it's a tool truck and it has the tool truck brand name that a lot of the equipment, a lot of tools is not rebranded, okay, by other companies and so on and so forth. So, you know, I suggest, you know, that you get sets like these, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Snap-on or Mac-O or Mac or Cornwell, but there's a lot of different other brands out there. But, you know, depending upon how much um, work you do, what type of work you do, how much um, you put your tools through the motions, okay? If you are an individual who works every now and then um, on their vehicles as a DIY or, or home use, you know, I wouldn't suggest, you know, the higher brand quality, get what works best for your budget, okay? But if you do put the motions, do your tools, and you work professionally in professional settings, at some particular point in time, you're going to want to step up um, the grade quality of your equipment, okay? So this is just to give you a little idea of some of the items. Once again, um, if you didn't catch all the part numbers, I will give you the part numbers again. Um, as you can see, it's BS. T60. Okay, this is the magnetic brake retaining spring tool. Once again, this is um, a retaining socket right here, which is quarter inch. Um, as you see, I have it on a quarter inch extension, you know, from a quarter inch ratchet, but they do have uh, quarter inch nut drivers, okay, for this particular socket, but I technically don't use um, the quarter inch. Um, nut drive i just basically use a ratchet okay so that's just you know basically what that is to give you the part number again um here which is b1461 and that's a brake spoon and once again this is a brake bleeding wrench so the part number will focus in which is s 6 h S6110A. Okay. And once again on a cotter pin puller. Is SGCP1B. Okay. So just you know. If you're just starting out. Well you know if you don't technically have a mechanical background and you know you look into obtain knowledge in order you know to basically service your own vehicles and try to save yourself a little bit of money these would be the type of tools uh, required to get the job done like i said it doesn't necessarily have to be a tool truck brand there are plenty of brands out there that basically supply and distribute some of the same items okay so just to point that out all right, so we're going to move along. And we're going to get to it. Okay, right now what I want to do is <clears throat> I want to get out a particular item to give, you know, the viewers my personal opinion after using this particular tool, okay, for a year straight in a professional setting, not as a DIY or, or home use or anything like that, in a real live professional shop. If you follow my videos, you will see that, you know, I do a lot of work um, with a lot of different make, model vehicles, and so on and so forth. And throughout a lot of equipment that I have, whether in the videos, you know, I show you a lot of different cordless lineup and pneumatic air tools, okay? When I'm in a shop, when it comes to cordless, cordless is um, not my first option because air was always accessible to me. Okay, so I do use um, air pneumatics very heavily. Um, as you can see in some videos, yes, I do have the Milwaukee um, cordless die grinder. Okay, but in shop, I would use a Mac uh, right angle die grinder, which is air pneumatic. Okay, even though technically I actually have my own Milwaukee um, cordless die grinder. And yes, the cordless die grinder, it's a beast within its own self. Okay, and I'm not saying that the Mac, 
you know, outperforms it or anything like that. But, you know, when you have the air accessible to you, you know, when it comes to a lot of cordless equipment that I have, it's put in place for a particular reason because, you know, each individual tool that serves its purpose when basically called upon, okay? But I am going to go to a particular tool inside the tool cart, and I'm going to get it out. I'm going to put it on a side tray so that you can get a good visual, okay? And I'm basically going to do a little explaining about the tool and things that I have noticed in my applications and, you know, at times what I've came coming across in certain situations and basically what I noticed about the tool. Okay, just to put my honest opinion out there and, you know, what I think about the tool as far as using it daily, you know, in a real professional, real worldly um, field setting, okay? Okay, before I begin, as you can notice, um, what I have sitting over here on a side tray next to my Dunkin' Donuts coffee, okay? This is the half-inch Milwaukee high talk, okay? To give you the part number, as you can see here, is the 2767-20 model, okay? Just as well as, yeah, you see that I have the 3H drive, and, um, you know, down here I have the M18 uh, fuel brushless uh, quarter-inch hex impact driver, and just as well as, you know, you always see other impact guns, which is the quarter inch stubby in the back and the quarter inch um, hex here. Um, as you see in a lot of my videos, I also have uh, Ingersoll Rand um, back here. As you can see up underneath um, the quarter inch stubby is the 3 8 drive. Okay, Ingersoll Rand, which I actually have two 3 8 drives and I have the half inch in Ingersoll Rand. Okay. Um, but when it comes to this particular tool right here, in my honest opinion, right, there's a lot of people out there, you know, who really like this tool right here. And then you have some that, you know, they have their preference or as far as what applications and what work that they do, you know, some people feel that, you know, it's a little too big and too bulky and, you know, that it's heavy, okay, um, testically, you know, for its size, it is a half inch drive and, you know, or at the prior moment, as you can see, I keep, uh, two 5.0 batteries for this particular gun. Okay. But you know, you have some people who use, um, 9.0s and 12.0s and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, even though, yes, this tool does hold, um, some weight to it and it's not, you know, testically as balanced as some other tools but you have to think this is a half inch um gun and it do pack a strong kick to it okay throughout um all the cordless tools and throughout the pneumatic tools the 3 f stu 3 f stubby it holds up very well you know 3 f drive is what we mainly more use a lot you know in our field of work and quarter inch drive uh, this is why I always state that this particular gun is one of my most used guns, even though, yes, I do have the quarter inch stubby that has um, an anvil with friction ring. But not for nothing, this was one of the most, um, how may I say, best purchases that I did purchase, okay, because there has been times when I have been in the shop, okay, um, using all sorts of different pneumatic air tools, and just as well as myself having my own um, air guns, which is Ingersoll ran, um, there's quite a few other technicians where I worked at, you know, that they also had Ingersoll rands. I had a few technicians in there that had uh, Mac impacts and Snap-on impacts, and there's been quite a few times where some of the technicians um, have got jammed up and stuck where they came across work that was cross-threaded and something was ceased and they couldn't remove, you know, either wheel lugs or something like that with their pneumatic air tools. And each and every time that I actually had to go to this particular tool, it has always gotten the job done. There wasn't nothing that this gun couldn't break, okay? Um... 
not for nothing, there are technicians out there, you know, some DYIs that put out videos and things like that. They try to put the gun through stress tests to show that, you know, the gun is stalling on them or it's not breaking a fast enough the way that um, they assume that it should. Um, with me working with this tool for a year, I have came across a couple of situations where the gun has, um, how may I say, um, it's slightly uh, studded to remove certain things until I realize something about the gun. Okay, um, when removing over fastening um, and heavily torqued down fasteners or lug nuts and so on and so forth, right? What I notice about this gun is that when you're not impacting, because when this is mainly more in my applications used to do removal, I don't normally use this gun to draw because it has so much force. So when I would come across situations where something wasn't removing itself or breaking free right away, a lot of times what I had to do as I'm realizing that it's not backing out and not moving, then what I would have to do is put the gun in forward, then drive out. And that's when I started to notice that in all actuality, it's breaking everything free. Um, once I learned that about this particular feature in the gun, I never came across any other situation that the gun has not been able to remove. So throughout all the cordless and the pneumatic air tools, I would say that this is the best purchase that I did make. Okay. This is a gun that's not used all the time as you know, some others, this gun comes into play when this gun is called upon. Okay. And there will be times if you are in this field and you do certain particular work, this gun could get you out of some real tight jams. Okay. Just as well as you see with the three eighth stubby. Okay. You have some individuals who put up reviews and yes, the three eighth stubby has excellent reviews, but then you have some viewers out there that are undecidable whether they want to go with the stubby and a half inch drive okay because of its same compactness but the thing is the reason why i never um purchased the half inch drive is because the half inch drive doesn't it has kick but at times it still does not have enough kick in its stubby version to break certain particular fasteners free especially not like this heavy half inch okay now as you know, with the half inch stubby, that is a 12 volt line, okay? The high torque is a M18 line, okay? So it is putting out a whole lot much more force, okay? It's brushless, all right? So it just there alone, in my opinion, like I said, this is one of the best investments that I've made. Anytime that I ever had to pull this gun out, it always got the job done. It has not failed me not one time yet. Okay, so just to shed a little light, you know, on that real quick, because like I said, you can see, and it's been in plenty of videos, I can show you, or if you haven't seen the videos, you can go back. I think I even put out um, one particular video where I actually have all the cordless out in, in a one-shot deal, because everything that you are basically seeing in this video, at this very prior moment, you can see guns laying at the bottom um draw and you can see guns laying at the top but you don't see everything that i actually have but i i do have one video that has a good majority of them all in one video since that video i think i've acquired maybe two more other items that are not enlisted in that particular video but you will see that um there is a lot of cordless in play if you've never seen that video i'll leave that video um link in the description underneath this one okay okay before i uh, wrap up this video uh just as a reminder you know to the viewers who are looking in you know like i state 
um, you know, at some particular point in time when the channel reached a certain amount of subscribers, you know, I got quite a few things that, you know, that I have that I want to send out and give, you know, to a few lucky subscribers once the channel reach, you know, a certain amount of subscribers. Um, as you can see, I did pick up some sets um, in a Sears 90% uh, liquidation sale. So, I, you know, I think I'll throw these sets in along with quite a few um, other items that I put out in a past previous video um, that I was going to give, you know, to the lucky subscribers. Okay, as you can see, this is a gear wrench, quarter inch, deep and shallow socket set here. Okay, this is a 20 piece set, as you can see. Okay, and there go your dimensions. Um, these are 6 point ASAEs and the part number is 84900, as you can see. Okay, and then what you have here is a 10 piece SAE six point um, standard socket and chrome. Okay, on a socket rail right here. Um, the part number to this is 80303. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I will be throwing these items along. And like I said, I got quite a few things, you know, for those lucky subscribers out there once the channel reach a certain amount of subscribers you know i'm trying to build this channel i know at times you know when i'm throwing up the footage i get a lot of viewers that always say you know you know you know uh, um, um um like i always say you know i do this simultaneously it's not like you know I, when i'm doing this i do it on my spare time a lot of times i be having a lot on my mind and i just come and i do this for the viewers while other things is going on out in the world and it's just according to how I feel during that time when I'm doing the recording, okay? Even though it can become a habit and kind of annoying at times, which I understand, you know, when certain viewers, you know, they go to make comments. I never get offended or nothing like that because I know what it is, you know. It's all a heckle. It's all, I take it as it's all love, all respect. All it does is just basically sharpen me up to when it's time to really putting out some real good quality content and good quality um, videos, you know. I'm not really concerned with camera equipment and things like that because I do have um, associates that do shoot professional films and professional videos and things like that. I'm not going to go as far to state, you know, who I am in the field, but... It is, you know, what it is. But until that time, okay, like I said, I am throwing in these items right here. So, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, because there are a lot of people viewing the video, okay, but there's not a lot of people subscribed, you know, understand? But some people, you know, they do come in, they make comments or whatever the case might be. But I do have a couple of videos out there, you know, that broke over a thousand views or whatever. It's not really a lot of views like that for a thousand views. But, you know, on two particular videos or three videos that was actually put out a long time ago, like people are just now catching up to speed and still haven't seen a, a good portion of a lot of videos that I put out. There are videos that I put out that still got like 20 and 30 views that are more excellent than the videos that basically got a thousand views but you know i don't know how the algorithms go with this youtube thing you know i'm just starting it off but you know that's just basically what it is all right so into the next one until i receive these items towards the end of the week and i get back to the storage unit to give you that next tool hole next tool review i'm going to check you later everybody enjoy your evening out there keep it safe and a blessed one as always peace